Um, and just one more question, uh, based sure. off of off of this topic that I had. Um, going back to uh, you know the corporate takeover, and mm-hmm. do you do you feel that? And listen, I'm I'm just trying to uh, you know I'm just bringing up the topic for thought. You know, sure. Um, sure. Do you think that? we are turning into as Americans, as corporate slaves, um, not just us uh, as, you know, the communities uh, in America, but um, the political leaders as well. Mm. Well, I think the political leaders have been, have been corporate slaves for a long time. I mean, to use that term, I mean, their, their campaigns and their positions of power have been bought by corporations a long time ago. Um, so, so for the most part, I, I think that's true. There are some, some politicians out there that I think have been able to tread around that. Um, and some of them have navigated it better and some of them were, you know, it's like some of them are just totally sold out. I mean, some of them are just a little sold out, you know, and, I mean, uh, and, and I'll take better over worse any day. Um, so, uh, but, but certainly, I mean, they, you know, Ralph Nader talked about this all the way back in the, the early 90s. I mean, this is why Ralph Nader won, you know, or why, why, why Ralph Nader ran as a candidate because he said that he used to be able to go into the offices of of politicians on Capitol Hill and bring to them an, a, an issue that affected consumers and affected citizens of the United States and things that were dangerous, and they would actually at least hear them out, and sometimes they would make a positive change. And he said what happened was it just came a day when nobody would even talk to him anymore. And he realized that these politicians are totally bought. And that's why he ran uh, on the, as a Green, you know. And, and some people say that as a result of him running as a Green, George Bush won the, won the election and beat Al Gore. You know, my assessment of it isn't that Ralph Nader uh, was the deciding factor. My take on it was that Al Gore was the deciding factor. <laughs> Al Gore just didn't... didn't offer much of an alternative to the American people, so we didn't vote for him. And again, that just comes back to the idea that Al Gore just came pretty bought. So, wh- when it comes down to, like, on an individual level, well, I guess if we're living in a corporate state, which we pretty much are at this point, I guess to a certain degree, you know, we're all controlled by that corporate state. It's it's uh, and I and I think it takes uh, it takes energy and effort to to work around it and and to um, live outside of it and and you know it's just it, it's a personal choice as to how if you want to do that and, and how you're going to do that you know I mean good luck trying to find a pair of shoes that that weren't made in China you know yeah. or you know or you know or a smartphone that 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 wasn't made with minerals that are that are possibly conflict minerals. Mm-hmm. You know, so so we're all we're all if we're we're living in this this country and in this society and you know, I've chosen to live here, this is where I'm gonna be, we're we're all caught up in it to a certain degree. You know, and it's it I that's why I think there there are certain things where we can do where we can spend our money certain ways we can put certain things in our body, you know, I, I like the idea of, for me personally, like being a vegetarian, because I think that it's a way that I personally can have an effect on someone or something else's life and make an impact on that, that thing's life. And maybe, um, you know, that's, that's where I can bring something positive into the world. And I, I really am a big believer and, you know, because obviously like, there's a lot of negativity out there, there's all these problems, right? And it, they seem so big. And I'm like, well, look, I mean, if you've ever suffered in life at all, and someone came along and they helped you and they took that suffering away from you, 
that's really valuable. You understand how special that is and, and how meaningful that is. So and there's, every day I just try to think to myself, I'm like, well, how can I reduce someone else's suffering in just one action that I'm taking? And, and it might seem like a really small thing, but if it's re- reducing someone's suffering in any way, whether that's a person or an animal or whatever it is, you know, whoever it is, I, that's actually really valuable, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I guess, you know, I've gone on a tangent, but I will mm-hmm. say, like, that's, that's why I really respect Amnesty International and what they do, because they work to free political prisoners and people who are, who are being held unjustly, sometimes in really horrible torturous conditions because of their political uh, speech or their political thought. And the way they do it is they have these little writing campaigns and, and they amass so much pressure with these uh, letter writing campaigns that they're able to free people from governments that are oppressive. And, you know, you might think to yourself, like, oh, I'm only one person, I can't do that much. Um, but, you know, if you were sitting in a cell and every letter that was written had, had the possibility of, of being part of your release from that cell, suddenly every one of those letters is really critical and really special to you. So I always just try to take that view on the world because I understand that a lot of the problems are bigger than, than just one, than just me. And I can't solve them alone, but I still really believe that even if we can't solve every world problem, we can still make the world better for some people. And, and you know, that's, to me, that's really valuable because if you're the person suffering, then uh, it, it's really, really special to you.